Welcome back to Cumberlatcha. A lot of you in the last few videos have asked about our homestead and wanted to see the quail. So I thought I'd start out today's video talking a little bit about the quail and take you back and see them. So let's head back to the hutch and get a look at the quail. I'm going to warn you guys, I got my wireless mic on with the uh, little fluff ball to try to cut down on the wind, but it is windy up here today. I don't know what it is. It was like in the 30s when we got up and now it's in the 50s, but the wind is just like howling and going through you. So, but to tell you some, I have 14 quail right now. We're gonna be getting some more and I'm having to step over some of these mud holes here. But uh, we have Loretta. Loretta's one that got injured back when we first got them. We had some really crazy roos and they were really tearing up the other birds, not only just the hens, but the roosters too. So we had to take care of Loretta, fix her up a little bit. And that's when I named her Loretta. It was just after, well, it was a little bit after, but I named her Loretta after one of my favorite country singers. And then we had another one that got messed up. And that's when I d took the ruse totally away from all the hens because I was getting tired of them being messed up. So I figured since I already had Loretta, I had to name her Patsy because she's my other favorite country artist. So we got Patsy and Loretta and then a couple more hens down with them. And top we got Holly. Um, those of you that's been with us know Holly's one that we hatched here. She's a jumbo white and she's like the queen of our homestead. She runs the coop back there. We also have Pearl who is a pearl quail and then the other one I just named Rose kind of like that after one of my favorite characters on Golden Girls. So let's go back and check out the birds. I stopped to see a weeping willow crying on his pillow. <laughs> So we're back here at the hutch and as you can see I have four actually four different hutches up in the top right if you look closely you can see Pearl and Holly's in there no that's Rose in there I don't see Holly down here there's Patsy there's my girl Patsy she always comes out to see me and check on me when I'm in the pen a couple of the bad boy roos up here but one thing I do, and it's about time, is checking for eggs. And I don't see any inside. I can check the rollout tray. And yes, we do. We have a couple of eggs. So we'll grab those, take them back up to the cabin, and take care of the casserole. Let me see if I can get either Loretta or Patsy out to say hi. Hi, Loretta. Where's Patsy at? Patsy went back in the box. Where's she at? She's hiding from me. Hey, Patsy. So everybody, this is Patsy. Patsy is one of our Katornich quail. She's one I helped take care of when she got injured. She is so sweet. She lets us pet her and she always comes out to see me when I'm doing things. But this is Patsy and her little roommate in there is Loretta. They have two other roommates that don't have names. So let's put Patsy back. And I think it's time to head back up to the cabin and get the casserole started. See you guys back up there. Hey everybody, okay, we're back inside now. It is windy as, I don't know what out here. I mean, everything's blowing. I had to keep, every time I heard crackling of the trees, I kept looking up, waiting for one of them to fall. But I got the eggs in the fridge and from the girls, and I'm just starting off our casserole. So we're gonna make a cowboy casserole today. Um, I've made something similar to it once before. It wasn't really a casserole, but it was more of a, I don't know, a stew. 
but I did that out over the campfire. I think I did that with mom when she was down here in July. So I just started browning off about a pound of ground beef. Now you can use half pound of ground beef, half pound of sausage, uh, chicken, uh, or turkey, any kind of protein you want. So I'm just sticking with the ground beef. And then I'm going to cut up one onion. And I like onion. Now you usually use a medium onion. I'm using a large onion because I love onions. I'm going to scoot this over just a little bit out of my way. And get these cut up. Hope you guys are enjoying all the other videos. We had a few more since the last time I saw you. Um, I'm impressed with some of these videos. I have not even tried a couple of them. And I'm going to be, as mom would say, writing these down and be putting them into my repertoire. In other words, I'm just going to put them in my list and I'm going to try them. So I'm going to put the onion in here so as it finishes off browning the meat, the onion can start cooking, get some of the flavor into the meat from the onion, and also soften the onion just a tad. Let me get that in there. And then I'll turn that back on so it can start cooking. So let me finish up the onion. While I'm doing that, I can tell you what all we have over here. Now this recipe does call for cannelloni beans. I prefer kidney beans. So I did change it up to kidney beans. You can put anything in here you want. Pinto beans, kidney beans. Actually, if you want to put lima beans in there, you could. I like my big old butter beans in some of my dishes too. So it just depends on what your family likes and what you like. And there I just tore my onion all up. I usually make it nice and pretty. This one just decided, oh, my oven's up to temperature. Just so you know, we're gonna bake this for about 20 to 25 minutes at 350 degrees. The oven is now ready for us but we're not ready for the oven. So we're going to put a combination of spices. Now you can change these spices up any way you want. One of the things I did leave out was cumin because I'm not a big fan of cumin. So I did leave that out, but you can change it up anything you want. The paprika, you can make smoked paprika, sweet paprika, just regular. You can do any kind of the oregano, basil. I'm using both. So you can put whatever, you, you know, whatever your family likes in it. But I'm going to list down below all the seasonings, and they'll be in the description with the amount that I use. Well, close to what I use, because I might get a little bit extra. But this is ground chuck, so there's not a lot of fat in it, so that's why I don't have to worry about draining it. And the teaspoon or teaspoon and a half of fat that's in there, I'm going to leave it in there. It gives good flavor. So let's get that going around there and get those steaming. I'm going to get my cutting board out of the way, put it over here. I don't think I need it anymore. So, like I said, I've got, uh, this is parsley for later, that's going to be for decorating it. We've got fresh basil, this is, mom dehydrated this. This is my oregano, this is all I have left out of my garden. So I can't wait to get the garden going again. I'm using my dried peppers, so the dehydrated peppers, dehydrated peppers, I've already are re constituted them in some of the water that I boiled the pasta in. I did take the leftover pork screw pasta, and I can show you here. I used it because I only need a cup, and I needed a cup for my last recipe. So I'm using that. In this one, I boiled it off al dente. Don't do it all the way done. You want a little bit of al dente because it's going to absorb some more of the moisture and liquid from the casserole as it bakes. So I left some of that in there. Now, to the... I'm going to move this back over here where I can work. I'm going to make a little hole here in the middle. And just like before, I'm going to put some tomato paste in here. The recipe doesn't call for it, but I like to add flavor. And this tomato paste is going to add a lot of sweet tomatoey flavor. And then I'm also going to be adding some better than bouillon. This is the roasted beef paste. I think it just gives it an extra punch and flavor. So I'll probably put maybe two tablespoons of tomato paste in there. And I'm just going to stir that around and get that start cooking down mm, that smells good onions and tomato and then i'll get the better than bouillon and i'm going to put about a teaspoon i don't want to overdo it but maybe just a little bit heaping teaspoon there and like i said this is just going to add extra flavor you don't have to put it in the original recipe doesn't even call for this i just like to add that extra punch of flavor into everything so now I move that out. We're going to find my 
tomatoes. I, you know I like my fire roasted tomatoes and these have the garlic in them. I'm not going to drain them because I want that tomato flavor that they're in. In here, hmm, I can already smell that. That is smelling good, nice and rich. I'm going to put those fire roasted tomatoes in there and just now bring everything back together. Get the onions, they're starting to soften up. I like a little bit of crunch on them and they're going to cook for another 20, 25 minutes in the oven. So I don't want to do them all here nice and done because then we're going to end up with just mushy onions. I'm going to put in my onions and there is a little bit of juice left in there. I'm not going to drain that out because like I said, that's more flavor. That's the flavor from those dehydrated peppers. So I'm going to leave that in there. Get that mixed in. Okay, so those are all mixed in. Next, I'm going to put in about a teaspoon of onion powder. And yes, just because I have onions in it doesn't mean I'm not going to use my onion powder. So let me get a spoon out here. And maybe a little bit of a heaping teaspoon of onion powder. And this is also the onion powder mom dehydrated. A lot of this stuff, and if I can, I wish I could do all these too. I like to grow my own herbs and spices and just use dehydrated. Have my own has really great, amazing flavor. Let me mix that in. So now I'm going to add in some garlic powder, probably about a teaspoon. Like I said, you guys can adjust this, whatever you like, what your family likes. You don't have to put exactly what I'm putting in. Put about a teaspoon of chili powder. Teaspoon of paprika. All right. One thing I am going to add in here is turmeric. Gives it a nice rich color, but also the turmeric is actually really good for you. It gives it a little bit of a spice because it's used turmeric in like different, um, oops, let me get this stirred, um, Indian dishes, curries, different things like that. So it just gives it an extra spice in a different location on your tongue. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed, and I'm only going to use about a half a teaspoon. Different spices affect you differently, some in the back of your tongue, some on the side, some on the front. So I like to get a little mix up there and get it, you know. A little flavor everywhere. All right. Now I'm going to put two or three garlic cloves minced, and I don't have minced, any fresh, so sorry, Mom, I'm using my jarred. Mom always has her garlic ready in the refrigerator, peeled and ready to go. Okay. And finally, we're going to put a can of kidney beans, and I did not drain these already so I'm just gonna reach over here and drain these in the sink real quick okay all right and then we'll put them right in there and this is really good if you do it out over a campfire outside in a big Dutch oven it's kind of what we did I think it was me and mom that did something like this if I can find it I'll put a link down below it was it was one of the best dishes we made while she was here get that all mixed in and then my oregano and my basil, probably about a teaspoon each of those. And there's mom's basil. My basil didn't do really good this year. And luckily mom did a lot, so she gave me a bunch. And about a teaspoon, and this is my oregano. That smells so good. Now remember when you use dried oregano or dry, any dried herbs, you're gonna use half as much as you would in a um, fresh because this is concentrated, it's dehydrated, there's a lot more of it in this little area. So you'll use twice as much fresh as you do dehydrated. All right, now let's add in our pasta. Like I said, I just used the corkscrew from our last recipe I did that I had left over half a box. I'm not gonna waste it. I told y'all I was gonna use it in something. So there we go. I'm use both of these to get this incorporated. Man. I should just have y'all just sit there and watch me eat this right out of the pan because it smells so good. I think I could do that. Well, I know I could do it. Now I'm going to taste it. I haven't put any salt and pepper in it yet because that tomato paste has salt. All that's in that's tomato paste and salt. And that salt's basically a preservative. There's salt in the uh, tomatoes 
that I did with diced tomatoes and there's probably some in that garlic so there we go got it pretty much mixed together I'm gonna give it a taste definitely can use some salt and pepper mix that in now lastly and this is totally optional the recipe calls for it but you don't have to put it in if your kids or your husband wife whatever does not like so we're going to use eight ounces of baby spinach it's going to look like a lot when i put it on here but it's going to cook down as you guys know any greens cook down really fast and almost to nothing so if you want to sneak it in and your kids to get some veggies they're not even going to really know it's in there probably Oops, get over here. Turn that back on. And now to help get that going, I took probably almost a cup and a half of the juice or the water from the pasta I was boiling. And I like to use it, especially when I make any kind of sauce. Don't dump all the water out when you drain your pasta. Keep some of it, even if you keep it in the pan, because that's going to help make loosen up your sauce some but it also has all the starches in it from the pasta so it will thicken your sauce at the end too as it cooks so let me lay these right over here for a second i'm gonna put some water in there got this on high i'm gonna put the lid on it let it cook down and then we'll come back and we'll mix the spinach into the entire mixture all right i'm back i'm stirring in the spinach it is wilted down i'm telling you what these colors this is beautiful i mean the red kidney beans the pasta the green from the spinach this dish is beautiful and i bet it tastes amazing can't wait to give it a try so let me get that done as you can see that big old pile of spinach is gone it's just wilted down to nothing so now the last thing we're going to do is after i turn this off I'm going to add in, I've got about a cup and a half, two cups of cheese. You can use as much as you want. I'm going to put probably about a cup and a half in it. And I'm going to save about half a cup. About five minutes before it's done in the oven, I'm going to take it out, put the cheese on top, and let that cook into it or on top of it and cook down. You're going to cook this 20 to 25 minutes at 350, like I'd mentioned before. And basically, you just want to get everything's cooked, but you just want to get it all nice and bubbly, get that cheese melted in there. So I'm going to pull this all together, get the cheese in there. It's all stringy. Now I'm going to set it over to the side, get my casserole dish that I've already, it's 9 by 13 casserole dish, and I've already prepared it with some cooking spray. Get this one in here. First, I'm just going to pour right into the middle. That way, as it spreads out, it's not going to go over the edge. Then we'll get the rest of this out. We don't waste any of this goodness. This tastes delicious, I'm sure. Well, I know it tastes good because I tasted it when I salt and peppered it. So, there we go. Now, just spread it evenly in the pan into the oven for like I said 25 to 30 minutes hey everybody we're back it's been about 20 minutes and I took the casserole out about five minutes ago put on the cheese that half a cup of cheese didn't get it for me so I got more cheese out probably put about a cup maybe a little more on top because I like my cheese and I put some chives on there too to Decorate it so they could just cook right in with the cheese. Oh, this place smells amazing. Look at this casserole. Isn't that beautiful? That cheese is melted, a little bit brown around the edges. Let me turn that off. Now, while this cools, because I know you all want to see me take a bite of it, but I don't want to burn my face. So I'm going to tell you about the collaboration. We have 16 other channels that have joined us and they're doing videos 
amongst me and moms. Mom's been doing them on, I think Thursday or Fridays. I'm doing them on Tuesdays. We swapped last week because I was busy trying to get some stuff done here and we're doing the kitchen area. Um, at the end of the month, everybody needs to go through and be, well, actually before the end of the month now, it, go through and watch everybody's videos. I have them all listed below with a link. There's also a link to my website, craigs-kitchen.com. You can go there. It has the full list also. You'll need to go to their website or to their YouTube page, I'm sorry. And you're going to want to like, subscribe. And the biggest part is you want to make a comment on their video. Because at the end of the month, that's where I come in. I'm going to take all the videos and pick one randomly. And then from that video, I'm going to use the random comment checker on a random comment picker on the internet and pick one person's comment. That person is going to be the one that wins the complete casserole kitchen bundle, which is three um, bamboo cutting boards, two different sets of casserole dishes, one glass, one stoneware. Um, what am I forgetting? The food processor and the double casserole carrier. So if you want to take your casseroles like this to a church luncheon or any kind of picnic, anything going to your friends, put right in there. You can put two casseroles in there or you put your casserole on the bottom and in the top put all your utensils, everything you're going to use. Yes, I'm looking down because I'm watching it for it to stop bubbling because it has been bubbling around the edges and it just, it looks beautiful. So I know I'm going to burn my face, but we're going to do this anyways. I'm going to take a piece out of here. Mainly because I want to taste it. It's because it smells so good. Now I'm going to twist this around because it looks a little runny. And I don't want to get that juice all over the place. And now we're going to try to get this out of here. And I don't think I'm going to be as lucky as I was in the last casserole getting it all out nice and in one big piece. Maybe I will. Whoa, that turned out better than I thought it was going to. I do have some little goodies over here that I'm going to add to my plate because I want them all. Now is the time to burn the face. Oh, it's hot on the bottom there, so yes, it's going to burn. I was right. It's delicious. You all just talk amongst yourselves because... I'm going to pull a mom and I'm going to have a couple bites of this because I want some of that spinach. Mm. Y'all can taste that curry. I hope you like curry. Put it in. It tastes amazing in here. If you don't like curry, you can leave it out. As mom always says, make it your own. Change the spices up. Take a break. This is delicious. But yeah, I can taste the curry in there. I can taste all the other spices. Nice garlic flavor in the onion. Those beans are just perfect. I'm going to have another one of those. So, y'all don't forget, go to everybody else's channel. I've, we've had three or four other videos from other channels already. I've been so blessed to have so many great other YouTube um, content creators join me in this. A lot of them have been from the past and join me in all those others that I've done the last three years. I got some new ones this year, which are coming up with some amazing recipes. I do wish Daz would have been able to be part of the collaboration. Like I told you in the last video, go over to his channel, give him some love. He thinks he broke his wrist and some fingers. I haven't talked to him since then, but that's why he can't do the casserole. In fact, he couldn't even type the email to me. He said his wife was typing it as he was telling her what to type because he was in so much pain. So I appreciate y'all joining me. Again, go over to the other channels. Don't forget to leave a comment because that's the only way you're going to be able to win that uh, casserole kitchen package. And until next time, y'all take care. I love y'all and God bless. Bye-bye.